Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Yalik, and I had already... Yes, doors closing behind me, that's a good thing. So I had already started this video, and I was about 75% of the way through it, and then I got walked in on, and also a notification at the same time. So, yeah, we gotta redo all of that. So first thing to note is that this right here, that is a new high for me, very happy about that. Um, not that it's a huge deal, but, you know, I took a screenshot of it, because... Hey, you know, it's got to be on record somewhere. And now it's on record here, so that's cool. Hey, wait, let's check. Do I have enough resources to... No, I do not. All right, anyway, so point of this video... Hi. <laughs> is that um, I've just finished off a couple of uh, PvP hits. Uh, clearing map last time tonight. And the last two bases that I had on my map were kind of weird. And I ended up approaching them in rather unconventional ways. So the first one, uh, you can see that I have Sparky with HRTZM, but Mr. Bruno Hefe. Cool name, bro. Anyway, I started off, it's Sparky, and I have uni Universal Remote, excuse me, but this is not something, usually you don't start off a player base this way. I've tried it a few times in the past. It almost never works. I'm going to go ahead, this base, he had his range towers really spread out, you can see the two ice boosting over there, uh, corner base, left corner, rather unconventional, definitely does not want to be attacked by warriors, based on all of this, around his HQ, plus the grappler, and the shield somewhere off and hiding in the trees, who knows where, so that was out, but I had this thought, with the really spread out range towers, um, these three are all kind of closely arranged, and um, I figured what the heck, I might as well go ahead and use Sparky and try to hack all three at the same time. And then the beauty of that, as you will see in a moment, we're just going to pull off a triple hack and be done with it and Sparky's going to die. So now we have three of the five range towers on this base down. There we go. Hack, hack, hack. Beautiful. Love it. And the beauty of that is now we've used two artillery. So that's a total of eight to mark two of those towers. But uh, barrage is still cheap and artillery is still relatively cheap. So we're going to use the fairly cheap GBE to remove this other rocket launcher as well. So now we're looking at this base, and really the main problems that we have here are this blaster and shock launcher, which can be shocked together. No hero, but on the other hand, having four of the five ranged towers down at the same time is a huge bonus, so I feel like that was a sacrifice worth making in this case. Um, don't have the passive critters, of course, because Sparky is dead, so trying to keep the regular critters out there uh, to keep my troops alive. Again, trying to keep shocks back here as much as possible. And now, <laughs> you will see there's a moment here coming pretty soon where my heart's going to be in my mouth because, yep, here it is. Yeah, that's about half my troops all under that one shock. So I'm really just trying to keep them alive. If I can get the shock launcher down, and then I do need this flamethrower near the HQ down. Now, we're in good shape here. Shock launcher's about to drop. You see there's one heavy left, and it looks like there's about three rifles right in the middle there. Their, their hats look like they're glowing, like little glow worms. And I see a couple of cryoneers, but they don't matter very much either. None of that matters. What matters is I looked down right about here, and I had 30 Zookas left. And I'm like ecstatic because once that shock launcher drops... We flare back to the corner, and there's very, very little that can bother us now. With that many Zookas left at this point in this attack, we're just it's, it, home free, golden, in perfect shape. Because 30 Zookas are going to rip through a shield on a PvP base in no time flat. So, a bit weird going with the uh, Sparky Sacrifice Gambit uh, hacking the range towers to remove them from the equation, but worked, doesn't usually, and in that case did, so that was pretty cool. And then this base, 
got even weirder. So this was pure RCZM, no heavies. But I brought Bullet and Taunt. This is all unboosted, by the way, because, you know, boosting is for op hits and op hit is for the morning or something. But for right now, I just needed to figure out a way to beat some people. And this guy was the last thing on my map, and he's a 7 too. You see, he's got the two masterpieces there, and then the five guardians below, and the two masterpieces are boosted, plus he has twin shields. Just for giggles, I tested out the GBE to see what it would be like if I were going to try to approach this with warriors, and it was going to take... Mm, it was like 110 GBE to bard out uh, that shield. And actually got 6 GBE back from having the machine gun and the gold storage uh, die in the process. So it was a lot of GBE. It was going to have to be fully boosted to attempt that trick. And didn't like the idea. I don't want to boost now anyway. Plus didn't like the idea of trying to go with just warriors and... Uh, Never mind barding, just remove the shield gens with uh, warriors manually by, you know, walking up the side of the base and going. Because this guy, rather oddly, not badly though, has his shield gens not quite symmetrical. Meaning, like, this one up here is a little bit placed a little bit higher than this one down here. If they were symmetrical, this one would probably be about where that iron mine is, or just underneath it. So that creates kind of funky walking lines. So that was out. Besides, I'd have to full boost. And then I looked back here and noticed that he has the two rocket launchers and nothing between them to really attack me. For some reason, I decided not to go that way. I don't know why, but I decided to come over here and sit between these two rocket launchers, but bring bullet and taunt. And so that should take care of things back here. That would be shooting my other troops. And then the only thing we really have to worry about is a shock down here on these three things. So I figured, what the heck, that was worth a go. And it worked like a charm. First try right off the bat. So maybe not the prettiest thing in the world. Uh, you're going to see some serious peaking at the end of my walk here. But that's fairly common with RCZM, whatever. So we lose some rifles or whatnot. Blah. Got a little bit of free GBE back here. Like, with this kind of a layout, why would you do that? Make sure your buildings aren't touching. Why would... I mean, I think I was down to the low 50s or something for GBE at this point. Uh, why would you give me anything back? if you've, Obviously, he cares about defense here. Don't make it the tiniest bit easy for me because, you know, people are going to take advantage and that's what happens here. So, start letting the rifles walk early because they stretch out for days and days and then a grouping flare. And then we can flare up to where we actually want to go. Start smoking everybody. Uh, some mines on the way, but we're not really worried. Just, you know, rifles. Rifles are cannon fodder, or in this case, mine fodder. Plus... Now the medics are keeping up really nicely. Um, you'll see here, this is what a first attempt looks like. Bunch of rifles decide to pop out the back of this smoke. Eh, well. Sorry, guys. And some critters and a shock. And we're just going to start chewing things alive. Zookas have 50% damage right now, so things disappear fairly quickly. And one more shock on the shock launcher in particular. And once that drops... Now look where we are with this base. So I want to hit from about right there, and I'm seeing three things. I see a boom cannon, and a boom cannon, and I see a grappler. And those are the only things left to bother me, and I have a bunch of troops. A whole bunch. So we're going to reflare here, get everybody pulled back to the spot where I want to hit from. And boy, that is just... I mean, that's rifles and zookas for days, days and days. That's a whole lot of damage. And we're going to put this in two times mode because it takes a bit. But it doesn't matter because we've got Bullet out there. Oh, Bullet just got grabbed by the grab. Didn't even notice if I had seen that, I would have taunted with him. And that would have been even better. But at this, it doesn't matter if the shield's already gone. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's screwed. Um, not that those are bad base designs, just... 
anything right now. Just about anything works. <clears throat> Offense is so overpowered with these tribes, it's not even funny. So, you know, that's RCZM, and that's getting a little weird with it, but uh, hey, it works, so I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, that's what I've got for tonight, and I will catch you guys later.